What's up? Nothing. Did you come out here to check it out, or what are you out here for? Because you told me to come out here. I didn't tell you to come out here. Yes, you did. Did I? Yeah. That's why I need the mini the body shop girl camera girl here. I guess. Because my arm gets tired holding my camera. I'm sure. Is there a does. problem with that, or? No, Pete. Well, why are you mad at me? Go ahead. Because you had rubber gloves on with rubber bands holding them on a minute ago. Yes, because I was just about ready to clean the bathroom. Well, what were you going to clean with the rubber gloves? The toilet that was you... Was that bad? That you men piss all over. Oh, I see. The it's outside yeah, of. Yeah, it's our, it's, it's our fault. It's fucking disgusting. Okay. Back off. Thank you. All right, listen to me. What? I'm not even that close to you. I'm like fucking six feet away. Yeah, I know. Stop. Stop, Pete. Come here. What? Where are you going? Are... We're talking about paint jobs here. We're talking about okay, clear coats. Okay, we'll fucking talk. We got this guy to send us some clear. We're going to do a little review on it, okay? You got it now, now, go ahead and tell everybody about your, your uh, experience with clear coats. I can't see you way over there. This is a wide-angle lens. Can you walk this way, please? Pay, Come on. I don't want right to there. This right oh, there. I don't even know what. I don't fucking paint. Okay. Come, Come here. Come here, man. You said to come out here that we're going to do some metal art. Now, I'm out here to fucking work. Okay, let me ask you this. After the clear coat is applied to most paint jobs, what is the usual procedure after that? You fucking sand it, Pete. And then what? And then you buff it. Right. And then you wash it, and then you wax it, and then you deliver the fucker. Wow. So you do know what's going on. <sighs> So, now that the body shop girl has explained basically what a paint job is. I don't is, even fucking want to be here, right? Pete. This is Let me ask you this. What happens to the clear after you apply it, usually after a couple of days? It shrinks back. It shrinks back, and what happens? And then you got to fucking sand I'm it. I'm right here. I've well, already told you, Pete. Why are okay, you Okay, so fucking... clear shrinks. And sometimes you get orange peel in it, and it doesn't lay down smooth. And sometimes it's hard as a rock. Sometimes it's not. Yeah, what do you Just, think about those clears that are hard as a rock? Well, they suck, of course. Yeah. I mean, who wants to sand concrete? Now, the clear that I use, is it a pretty good clear? Yeah, it works real great. All right, let me ask you this, okay? Can I Shit ask you this? It fucks up sometimes just Here, for no fucking Instead of me reason. walking into you, I'll just zoom into your face. Okay. Would, I'd rather, would you rather me zoom? I guess in that way I don't know when you're fucking right in my face. Because it acts, you act like you don't want people to see it today or something. I guess, Pete. Okay. All right, so the guy sends me this clear. It's called All Candy Wet Wet. Claims it's the best clear in the world. I'm sorry, is that the funny? The name is offensive, but yeah, okay. All candy wet wet? Why is that offensive? <laughs> I don't know, it just sounds You got offensive. sex on your mind or something? <laughs> so he sends me this clear, he says, Pete, do me a square deal. Okay, don't give me the old round that you want to do. Do me a square deal. Try our clear out. Uh, you know, get a customer that'll uh, 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 agree to use it and, and paint one of your custom paint jobs on there. And I want medium opinion. wet, wet, slow, wet, wet, fast, wet, wet. Which do you prefer? Do what? <laughs> Which do you prefer? You need to get your mind out of the gutter because you are my wife. Okay. Well, it's funny, man. Okay. I would not have named that. That, okay. They didn't think very well. Alright, great. Yeah. Now we got the name down. We got your opinion on the fucking name of the fucking clear we're trying out to fucking it's funny. use here. It's funny. Alright. He sends me the all candy wet well, okay. wet. Okay? Yeah, the wet see, wet. Look, the wet wet now line. You're it's loud. called wet wet line activator. He got two of each hardeners here because he didn't know when I was going to use it. We are going to use the medium wet wet. Okay? Okay. We got the clear coat. Wonderful. What are you going to use it on? I'm going to use it on the 69 Roadrunner. Norm's car. He has agreed to go ahead and do it. I was about to say, I wonder, if, did you ask him? Because he might not appreciate it. In case it's yes, crap. I did ask him. Can we move down the fucking line here? Alright, you're the one that's filming this crap. I think she's on this wet, wet thing and she's got some kind of uh, fetish for the word wet, wet. I don't <laughs> understand what the fuck's going on here, but it's not looking like it's a wet, wet situation.
because we don't want any imperfections when we apply the wet, wet, clear. What? So I have applied, huh? Nothing. What'd you say? So I have applied my three full wet coats of paint. Oh, the paint's not wet, that's right. Sorry. Just the clear. I've applied the three full wet coats of clear. And now what we will do, now that those are dry, we're gonna go ahead and apply three coats of uh, clear. Did I say clear or paint? Okay. That's because you're fucking with me. The situation is, and this is real important, is that um, the owner of the product went over and specifically with me on the phone how to spray this clear on. And he said, if you're using an HVLP gun, turn your air pressure up to approximately 50, 55 PSI at the gun. That means if you aren't using a regulator, you'll have to use your air and turn it up over here. Look. This air pressure will have to read when the trigger is pulled, approximately 60, 65 psi. It loses 10 by time. That's because, watch my finger, that's because of this right here. You're using a 50 foot air hose. By the time it travels through the hose to the gun, you're going to lose approximately 10 pounds of air. Okay? He also told me to go ahead and open the gun up all the way as your volume and control it with your hand instead of the gun. Because it's a very, very high solids clear, which I already knew that by the way he was explaining it. And you have to put it on very quick at a high pressure because it's very thick. You need to use that high pressure because if you use your HVLP gun and you're only spraying at 20 PSI or 28 PSI, it's going to come out of the gun, and since it's a very high solids clear, it's going to get a lot of runs in it, and it's not going to dry properly. Now, I'm not going to use an HVLP gun. I'm using the Binks number 7 gravity feed gun. I'm sorry, siphon feed. The HVLP is the gravity feed, because that's what I'm used to using. And that spray gun is set at 60 PSI at the wall. And I also open it up, open it up pretty wide. And we're going to take our pattern and we're going to open it up and then close it one quarter of a turn. That's going to give us a, a nice even pattern approximately this wide right here, all right, this far away from the vehicle. So, you have to be very quick with this clear and you have to be very consistent. One more thing that 10, Okay, and that's T-N-N-N, -N -N. Um, that would be abbreviated for Tennessee because that's his real name. He also told me that it's, it's, it's very recommendable that you put a tack coat on first, kind of like if you're painting old school acrylic enamel. The way that I spray the clear, I don't really put a tack coat, I put a medium coat is what I call it. The first coat that I put on, I'm going pretty quick with it. And I'm covering and I'm chasing out the dryness as I'm painting it, but it's a wet coat, but a thin coat. Does that make sense? Yeah. That way, if you put the dry coat on, what I have found out using a dry coat, and this is just my experience, and this is what happens with my equipment that I have, it creates a system that is going to have orange peel in it. So I would rather put a wet coat on there, but a thin coat. So I call it the medium coat. Then I come back and I put two full wet coats. And to me, that is equivalent to three wet coats of clear using my Binks number seven versus an HL fuck off P gun. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get the three full wet coats of clear on it. We're gonna look at this now. When we come back, um, we're gonna go ahead and give it a good gander on what it looks like. But to really get the uh, special effect of this and to actually give a good review on it, we will probably let those sit for three weeks before we determine whether they need color sand or buffed. And the reason for that is, is because I still got to paint the car itself. And that's going to take a couple weeks. So that's going to give us plenty of time to let the cure sit around and, and shrink down to its fullest shrinkness 
without color sanding and buffing it and really get a good look at it to see if it's all that and a wet, wet bag of juice. Let me get the clear on. We'll be back. Okay, I just got the first coat of clear uh, applied to all of the bolt-on pieces. Let's go in there and look it over. I got to keep the fan running. Um, I don't want to stop the fan because that actually creates a dust problems when you do that. Let's go in there and look it over and see what the first coat of clear looks like after being applied and waiting 45 minutes. Now I want to explain one more time, this is only one full wet coat of clear and it looks like it went on very, very smooth. Um, I see where there's a dry spot right here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there is a dry spot. But as you can see, um, it has a very, very nice shine to it, and it looks very, very wet. If you look at the back side of the trunk, now I only sanded this 320 dry, and you can still see my reflection in it. I'm actually standing approximately four feet, five, six feet away from it. I'm gonna go back as far as I can, and you can still, if you look close enough, see my reflection moving around in the deck lid um, 12 to, so I'd say 10, 12 feet away. These are the pieces that are really hard to clear coat because you're gonna get runs in them. And as we look at this, I can see that the clear went on very smooth, um, came out very nicely, and there's no runs at all. So just by the application of putting the first coat on, I'm actually happy with the clear. And I see that uh, it dried thoroughly within the 45 minutes and is ready to apply the second and third coat. I'm gonna go ahead and do that when we get the final coat on, we're going to wait approximately another 45 minutes to an hour. We'll go in there and check it out and see what we got. Now when I apply my second and third coat, I'm going to have to go just a little bit slower than I did applying my first coat because the first coat is actually a very, very quick tack coat. But once again, I call it a medium wet coat by the way that I apply it. So I'll be back. So far so good. Everything looks like it's uh, coming together and the clear looks like it's working out properly but we really won't know until the end of the job okay we started painting this approximately 8 30 this morning now that includes the primers and the paint and the clear coat it's now 7 45 at night so this is approximately I'm sorry you can see myself right there uh, this what we're looking at right here this is approximately um, an hour after the final coat, which I put three coats on here, and I believe that this clear right here going on um, as wet as it does, we'll go ahead and use the word wet instead of thick, um, you can probably get away with two coats of clear. You don't have to use three coats. And the clear looks pretty good. I like the way that it laid down. I didn't get any runs on the clear whatsoever. The door jams of the car came out really, really nice. I only put two coats of clear on that. The middle coat, when I painted the second coat, I didn't put any clear on the inside of the door. I just did the outside. So you can see that this is only two coats of clear. And look at the shine we have here only having two coats of clear on it versus the three coats of clear. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a little bit more orange peel in that clear being three coats than there is with two coats. Now, I'd like to say that uh, a lot of paint jobs I do, and it's normally collision jobs, because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are going to be doing collision jobs and, you know, uh, situations that will arise in repair jobs, let's say. And this clear right here is a two coat clear system. If you put it on like the requirements suggest, you can get away with two coats of clear, walk away from it, pull the tape off, send it down the fucking road. No questions asked, doesn't need no buffing. Now I'm talking of right now. So being a hobby guy in your garage maybe and not owning a shop like I do, um, this clear would be an excellent clear to use as far as in and out, get her done, do it right, and get your money. You're gonna see right in this area here, and I'm shining the light on it, where it didn't really dry to a super high gloss finish down in this area. 
And I noticed this after I went ahead and I painted everything because I painted the doors first and then I went ahead and painted all these pieces over here. And as I was going around checking everything out, I noticed that there was a dry spot on this door right here. So I went ahead and put another coat of clear on top of that to try to get, a, get the dryness or imperfections out of it. And I see that it's still dried to a resistance of having that blurry spot. You can see how it's blurry there, but as we get up here, it's not. So that's what I'm talking about. Now something like that could have happened from many, many uh, suggestions that we can go through, such as it could have reacted from having the clear sitting around too long and, and using the clear. Uh, it could have reacted from having cold air in our hose. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, a bunch of different shit could have been going on with that, but out of everything that I painted, the door is the only thing that had that problem. So that could be a relationship to um, something that had to do with possibly the reducer in the paint, I don't know. But it's happened to me before using other clears and then I have to end up going back and buffing them to uh, fix the problem. And this is a common problem when you're doing a job like this is getting that type of a situation where you have the dullness no matter how much clear you put on and then it turns to very, very deep gloss on the top. So that is a fixable situation and I don't believe that happened from uh, the brand of the clear coat. Um, I just have a feeling that something reacted somewhere with the chemicals and it happened. So we won't be blaming that on the, uh, the, the clear itself, the wet wet clear, um, because this has happened to me many times before. But this door will need to be buffed out to fix that problem. We know definitely for sure. So if you look at the big picture here and you see all the parts that I painted, the only situation we had was on this door right here um, where we have the dry spot down here and then of course it turned glossy and that's a fixable situation. We will have to buff that to get rid of it. But the real question is, is the rest of this going to shrink down where I'm going to have to buff it considerably to make it look like a show car? And my opinion on that situation is, is that it doesn't matter if the clear is guaranteed, no buff clear, this, that, or the other. All the jobs I do, I color sand and buff because um, the cars that I do are very meticulous type cars and I believe that they should be color sanded and buffed anyway. The real deal is, is if you apply three coats of clear to this, my friend Pete, and I didn't want to buff it, is it going to be good enough to say, hey, I can take it to the car show, I can drive it every day? The answer to that is, my friend, Mr. Viewer Guy, fucking YouTube dude, I can't give you an answer because it ain't even dried 24 hours yet. But when that answer comes, my friend Pete's going to be there to give you the answer because we are going to actually wait approximately two to three weeks to give you the 100% answer what my friend Pete thinks about this clear right here that everybody calls all candy wet wet clear. We'll see what happens. It's all going to consist on how it color sands and buffs and what it looks like on the finished product. All candy wet wet so far it's a go. Try it out. You'll like it. I guarantee you can spray two coats of this. It's a beautiful paint job with two coats. No buffing required. And you'll be a happy camper. Um, it, it says right here it has two times the UV standard protection. Okay, what that means is that the, the clear will not fade out and it will hold its retention throughout the time. So, uh, a longer time. I'm fucking heading out. I gotta go. It's time to say goodbye.
Well, I'm working on this road runner hood. I got to get it painted, dude. That's what I'm doing. And I've already blocked it out once and primed it. And now I got to wet sand it. It's 400 to get it done because this is our road runner that actually used to be your car. Am I right? That's right. Now, you say that Roadrunner was your car. Now, you did all the body work on that Roadrunner, am I correct? Stripped uh, it no. down, gutted it out. Uh, you know, what all did you do to it, Dave? I did everything. I uh, sandblasted it right down to bare metal. Uh -huh. Did all the body work, put a quarter panel on it, put a trunk floor in it, put okay. the pans in it. So, would you say that that's a bona fide, strong, durable car? If someone was to buy that car? Oh, now it is, yeah. Well, it was a pretty solid car to begin with, but yeah, it's. It's uh, it's ready to go now. So you went and tried to be Mr. Used Car Salesman, you know, egg it all up to be in something that it's not. Now, well, you uh, you did the finish work on it, so you can do it. Yeah. Well, you know what I found out? Being an honest guy when you're doing something and telling people the truth is really the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, why bullshit people and tell them some scam-ass joke? I mean, if you're going to be an honest guy, you've got to really fucking tell them the truth, dude. And that's basically what's going on right here. Well, personally, I, I sleep better at night when I do, so, you know, yeah, that's my problem. I hear that. So, what we got is a situation that says, my friend Pete's the fucking middleman guy, and I don't like to be the middleman guy. Okay. We got a product out there, it's called Wet Wet. I'm sure you've heard of it, it's all over the internet, am I right? Yeah. And what have you heard about that stuff? That Wet Wet Candy Clear, whatever they call it. Well, uh... All candy, Wet Wet, that's what it's called. Well, the way I understand it, you can uh, you can use less of it, uh, uh -huh. less coats, I guess, um, which means it's probably a thicker product than uh, 2002 or 2020. Mm -hmm. So I you've never used it. I've never used There's a lot it. of people out there that have used it, and a lot of people claim that this stuff's the best fucking clear in the whole wide world, right? I'm sure you've heard that too, right? Yep. Well, my friend Pete actually got several quarts of it, a couple gallons, and I also got several different hardeners, and we actually tried it on your Roadrunner to see what would happen. Now, I believe that this uh, all-wet candy, candy clear is specifically designed for candy apple paint. I don't know, do you know anything about candy apple paint? Yeah, I've shot candy apple paint. Okay, candy apple paint is actually clear coat with a very high concentrated tint added into it. Right. So by the time you paint your base coat on there, which is usually a very thick base because it's got a lot of metallics in it and a lot of sparkle going on, by the time you put your candy apple on there, and we're talking several coats, okay, we're not talking two coats, usually you put three to four coats, am I right? Oh yeah, at least. All right, so you do that, now you got four coats of clear, all right? Now the situation is, with this type of uh, uh, a paint, we're talking candy apple, is the more you build that clear up, the softer the paint's going to get. Right. So I believe that the wet wet, which we got right here, okay, this is the wet wet clear we're talking about, all right, is basically designed for the guy that wants to paint his car candy apple and only requires two coats of paint. I'm sorry, clear coat. The UV protection is supposed to be double of everybody else. It does go on very thick and it is very, very durable. So, I went ahead and painted the hood, the doors, and some little parts with it. And what I found out is going to be very interesting to all our viewers, because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to fucking lie, dude. I'm not a fucking liar, I'm not a cheat, and I'm not a scumbag. And hopefully everybody out there will understand in the end what the real situation is about allcandy.com, wet, wet, clear, and hardness. Okay, here we are. This is the car that we painted with the wet, wet, all candy clear. Now, you're looking at that car, and you're saying, wow, it really came out beautiful. Before we go any further, I want to tell you that we are actually in the process of putting this car together. It's filthy dirty. Um, it actually needs to be detailed out, possibly. There's a few places on it that need to be rebuffed from people rubbing their hands on it like that to see how smooth the finish is, which is a bunch of shit. But, you know, that's the way people are. they got to check it out and look at it. And a lot of people that come over to my shop know that I'm doing this wet, wet, candy, clear shit. I've gotten very many emails. I've got a lot of fucking phone calls on it. They want to know what my friend Pete thinks about the wet, wet, clear. Now, I want you to take a good look at this car, and I want to tell you again, we did the trunk lid with the all wet. This is with the clear that I use normally. I don't know if you can see a difference in there, but I will tell you this. It's got a very, very lustrous shine. It's a very, very deep shine. 
and I like the durability of the clear coat. Now I went ahead and sprayed three full wet coats of clear because that's what I was actually told to do. Um, after I read the uh, instructions thoroughly and I called the manufacturer, the, the, the real requirement of it is, is two full wet coats of clear and you could apply three if you want, but that's overkill. So, what is my conclusion to the clear coat? Before we go any further, we're going to bring the owner of the car in. We already talked to the previous owner. Come on over here, Mopar Norm guy. What are you thinking? Uh, you saw me paint it. You know what's going on. What do you think? Can you tell any difference of this clear versus that clear and all this other stuff? No. Looks the same. Looks exactly the same. Looks exactly. The same. Is that good or bad? That's good. Nothing wrong with this car. Okay, but I'm asking you, is that a good situation or a bad situation? It's a good situation. Why is that? Because we don't have to repaint anything. We don't have to repair okay. anything. All right, so you know we painted this versus this. Do you see any difference in the way that it lays down versus this clear laying down or anything at all? Nothing. Looks the same. Okay. Do you like the shine on the all candy wet clear? Does it look deep, lustrous, and very flowing? to the eye where you can see real deep in it and you can see all these uh, you know, far away actions going on. Because I can see a lot of stuff going on in that. I can actually read the sign way over there. It says Magic Metal Art by Pete. Way up in there if I get down. I can read it too except my eyes suck. But other than that, no, it's a good deep shine. Okay, Dave, good. come on over here. Let's get Dave's opinion. What are you thinking, Dave, previous owner guy up the road right now? Once again, I want to tell you this is filthy dirty. It still needs to be polished out, waxed and all that. What's your opinion? I can't see you in the camera. No, I think it. Uh, I think it laid out really nice. I mean, if you look across there, you don't see any orange peel. Uh huh. Um, so you know, if they say you don't have to buff it, there may be something to that. Okay, how y'all doing out there? We're back. Um, now we went through the whole process. You saw that where I started from the beginning and ended up painting it, and we saw how the clear laid down, and we also saw there was a few spots in it that didn't lay down properly. So then we let it sit for three weeks. And after three weeks, I had to buff it out. I did have to buff it out. Don't be alarmed. We're not done yet. So I did buff it out, but there was pieces on there that I only put two coats of clear on. Now, I did apply three coats. Now, I want to let you know, it was approximately 55 degrees, somewhere in that area. When I painted this, I used the medium reducer. TN, T-E-N-N, -N, told me to go ahead and use the slow reducer. I was too afraid to use the slow reducer because I didn't want to get runs in it. If I would have used the slow reducer because I did have my heater on uh, going into my paint booth, so that probably could have jacked the temperature up a little higher. If I would have used the slow reducer, I don't think that I would have got the dry spots that, I, uh, that occurred on it on the one door, and then there was a spot, some spots on the trunk. And I also believe that it would have flowed out a lot nicer. We let it sit for approximately two to three weeks. We went ahead and color sanded and buffed it. Now, most of the time when you get this off-brand name, and when I say off-brand, I'm talking it's not DuPont, it's not PPG, it's not Matrix Clear, it's nothing. It's an off-brand name. Most of the time, those clears are very, very hard to color sand. If you let that clear sit too long, it's going to be as hard as a rock to sand. When I painted the inside of the door jams, and we'll go ahead and open this right here. This was only two coats of clear on this door jam. Now when I painted those door jams, they looked beautiful. Alright? This was only two coats on this jam, and I'm going to walk around the car and I'll show you that. And there was no buffing required. These things look like a mere finish. I stopped at two coats and that's where I left it. The same with this door jam here. All right. Once again, you're looking at a car that's filthy dirty. We're putting it together. We're in the process of building the car. We're not looking at a finished show car over at the fucking show and saying, wow, we wow, look what I got here. I got this all candy clear and it looks beautiful. All right. Well, I'm showing it to you this way on purpose because I want to, I want to show it to you in the stage of not being a finished car, just being painted. If we look at this panel right here, this was sprayed with two coats of clear. This is a two coat clear system using the wet, wet candy clear. This came out so good that I will not be buffing that. This is a piece that we can say it's done. So yes, what the conclusion is, because I want to wrap this up, I got a lot of work to do and I got to get down the road. This is the real deal with wet, wet candy clear. It's a nice product. It's got very high solids in it. 
I believe that the UV protection is up to standards of two times, all right? And I believe that their product is a great product to use because the real story on using clear coat, I don't give a fuck if you use PPG, if you use fucking DuPont, if you use fucking Matrix, if you use uh, any other clear out there, all right, besides the cheap, inexpensive bullshit, $50 a gallon shit, that if it's in the price range of being a high quality clear, the way that it becomes a very, very high quality clear is you've got to use it more than one time. For you to be a person that can lay that clear down, you have to know your product. You have to know what hardeners to use and what temperatures, just like I was telling you, Tin told me to use the slow hardener. Even though it was 56 degrees out, he said I would have better luck in my paint booth if I used the slow hardener. I didn't want to do that. I went ahead and used the medium hardener, and I think what happened is it dried too fast for the situation that I was in. So if I would have used the slow reducer, I do believe that this would have been a near perfect, no buff clear, and all I would have had to do is nib it out if I would have done it his way. But I am used to using the clear that I use because I can put the clear that I use all the time, mix it up, bam, 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 spray it, I'm done because I use it all the time. So this is my opinion about all candy wet, wet clear. It's a very nice clear. It's a clear that says it's up there with the top three. And for you to master this clear and to get that professional look that you want with it, you have to use it all the time. I wouldn't say all the time, but you have to use it where it would be your main clear that when you are going to paint an overall car, this is the clear that you're going to use. Because you have to master it just like you do anything else. I've been using this clear right here that I use for over 20 years. And I will stick with the clear that I'm using. And I will also incorporate all candy wet wet clear into my system of painting overall paint jobs. Because now that I used it the first time, I know where I fucked up. And I know what I got to do to make it right. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. And I give all candy clear 1 out of 10, I would say a good 9.5. Because I fucked it up and it didn't come out perfect the first time. This is Pete again, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, looking at the all candy wet wet candy clear and thinking about telling everybody out there, if you're interested in this clear, give Tin a call over at the number that you see right now and tell him my friend Pete told me to call you to get a $25 discount on my first order. And I guarantee you, if you do exactly what he tells you to do, because I didn't, I'm Mr. Hardhead fuck off guy, and I didn't listen to him, but I guarantee you if I would have listened to him and done the uh, slow harder, it probably would have been perfect. But I did have to color sand it. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about the color sanding. The color sanding on this is very, very easy. It turned out beautiful. It color sanded real nice. I didn't have no problems with it. I went straight from, I believe it was 1500 down to 2000, I buffed it out, it buffed out really super clean, and that, my friend, is a very hard thing to find. I would rather have a clear, a clear that orange peels up a little bit and color sands out nice than a clear that turns rock solid and I can't do jack shit with it. Using two full wet coats on a non-candy apple clear coat is actually a better way to go because it goes on so thick and it's such a high solid clear. You really don't need to have three coats. Um, we also found out that when you do put three coats on, you might use the wrong hardener like I did, but uh, that's just because I never use this clear and I'm just going by the temperature rating and this, that, and the other. Um, if it does shrink back, we found out that it color stands and buffs very easy and it's a good clear to work with. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, allcandy.com, uh, wet, wet clear, and uh, contact them guys over there. Uh, and see what they can do for you. If you mention DIY Auto School or my friend Pete, you're going to get a 25% discount on the product. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can say. This has been a long video set. It's been a situation of uh, trials and tribulations. I thought I was going to have to color sand it down and basically re-clear coat it, but I didn't. And um, I would actually use this clear. I would use this clear 
um, once I perfected it to a full-time basis and uh, yeah go that route but uh, today and now I got other parts to color sand and buff so we can get this car done and I did my review and I think the review is if you use it continue to use it because that's the only way that you're gonna master it allcandy.com wet wet clear the guy's name is Tan, T-E-N-N, short for Tennessee, and he's ready to sell you some clear at a 25% discount. 25% discount if you mention my friend Pete, SWRNC, or DIY Auto School. Give Tan a call and uh, tell him my friend Pete told you uh, to call him. Get that $25 discount, and hopefully you will be using allcandy.com wet wet clear coat on your next car or project that you plan on painting. We'll see you later. So the guy sends me this clear, it's called All Candy Wet Wet, claims it's the best clear in the world. I'm sorry, is that the funny? The name is offensive, but yeah, okay. All Candy Wet Wet? Why is that offensive? <laughs> I don't know, it just sounds... You got sex on your mind or something? <laughs> Medium okay. Wet Wet, Slow Wet Wet, Fast Wet Wet. Which do you prefer? Do what? <laughs> Which do you prefer? You need to get your mind out of the gutter, because you are my wife. Okay. Well, it's funny, man. Okay. for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.